to your argument as well. What about the word realistic? Because the, 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 the difficulty I have when I've listened to Witty and whatever his name is, is that when they come out with their statistics, which as we know, are capitalized were outdated or were not relevant or were not in the right context, they are looking at it through their eyes, meaning I don't, I, I don't believe that they are looking at it through 45 or 40 million people that are working that need to earn a living that you know restaurants are closed and so on and so on. No, I, I, I think I think you're Sorry. I think you're right in that respect. I think it's taken into consideration, but again, I, I think it comes down to the to, to the variables of optics and how does it look if he actually if he gets it ah. totally wrong and more people die. Andy, um, you're, can I just jump in because you're right and it's really important to to respond to that point. If you're in court Okay, I've given evidence in court as an expert witness. Now, the whole point of an expert witness is they have to be independent. And uh, uh, usually, um, either one side or the other, well, usually both sides in, in a court case will go and find their expert witness. But the problem with that is that expert witnesses are often known for, uh, obviously, they, they feel they have to come up with results that favor the person who's paying them. So now the court increasingly appoints expert witnesses as independent. Uh, you have to be independent without a vested interest. Um, now, and, and I've, I've given evidence in court against another expert witness who was so biased, it was staggering. Uh, and, and simply when I told the barrister to pose questions to him, he just wasn't answering them and nobody could make him. Um, so first of all, Sage... I don't know about now, but certainly for the first wave, um, did not have a single virologist or single infectious disease person. And Niall Ferguson is a theoretical physicist. Secondly, um, these are the, the government scientists are all working and paid for by the government. OK, They're, they are dependent on government grants and usually, but not always, professors who take many admin jobs do so because that's where their strengths lie in other words they're not good clinically at all i do stress usually because there are exceptions um and secondly well, those can't do teach that's right and secondly the i think it was valance um said in the parliamentary select committee that their job originally was simply to advise about the virus and not about the wider effects of lockdown. But the basic medical premises do no harm. So you cannot separate one from the other. Um, and yet they were backpedaling and obviously trying to avoid responsibility because increasingly studies have shown that lockdown potentially will kill 10 times more people than it, than it will save. And if you're giving advice as a doctor without explaining all of the side effects, then you're not achieving informed consent. It's illegal. Uh, can I add to your point, if you backtrack a little bit, Ferguson, the, this what I call the, the Professor Lockdown, who, as we know, caught with his, literally with his trousers down um, when that married woman uh, decided to give him a, a full service uh, during the, the, the first lockdown. Plenty of fish, wasn't it? What I find very interesting is that, I mean, this is obviously a coincidence, says the most sarcastic person in Northwest London, that when he was told to leave Sage as the head of Sage because he was a naughty boy and couldn't follow his own rules and his exaggerated figures that are 40, 100 times fold in every other disease and epidemic and SARS, whatever, that we've had, and he was already proven to be completely so far out that we should have culled hundreds and thousands of cattle, but that's another story. Then they created another group that he is now head of, which is replaced or which is working in combination with Sage that advises the government that he is now head of. And it's just been done very quietly, very behind the scenes, but he's still active and he's still advising the government. Correct. Well, that should tell you everything. Yeah, I mean, but the thing is, this is where you, you, you've got to put it in, you know, when you actually have to look at Boris. And as I said, it, you have to be objective about it, where, regarding of any personal feelings you have towards him. Now, he's not, he's not, he's not experienced in, in medicine or, or viruses to be able to, to talk 
effectively on that like he has to listen to the experts now if he actually and 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 and, and whatever some whatever basis he actually listens to them on if he's to get it wrong does he really want to go down in history in, in his position um as the person who probably killed so many more people because he, ch he chose to ignore the advice of the medical professionals gave him that that comes down to up that as i said that comes down to optics yeah, but that optics, what you're to, leading to, Andy, so how, is, how is the, legacy. How he's perceived, legacy. How he's perceived, that's right. So it's his own self-interest yeah. um, in, in some ways, which is actually, it's, it's not even self it's human. It's his own human, it's own human behavior. You know, he wants, to, he, he wants to be seen to be doing a good job and go down as a, as a great prime minister. He doesn't want to go to the prime minister who, you know, killed X amount of people because he chose not to follow the advice of the medical experts because that's what the media would betray him as if they did that wasn't it you andy that but, actually said in one of the last podcasts that he's because i think you've studied him a, a little bit more than i have that he's very much into his history into his legacy uh into what he could be leaving behind once he leaves office uh in a few years time well the thing is i mean he's i mean he, he's a smart guy he's actually very well read i mean um mm. From what I recall, he was very much into his old, his Greek mythology and things like this. But he also he also appears to have modelled himself on Winston Churchill a lot, who um, who was yeah. probably I wouldn't say he's he was an effective in, in in history, but you know he only really had one I would say one big win, which was World War Two, because he was in the political wilderness for the best part of twenty years. Uh, but he did model, he has modelled himself on Winston Churchill, who went totally against the grain, but he, you know, and said, well, well everyone says, oh, we should negotiate with the Nazis and things like this. And he's, the, and he's the one who actually said, no, we will fight until the, you know, fight until the end or, or, or I, can't remember, I can't remember how he articulated it at the time. He was disagreeable. But, and that's what we needed at the time, a disagreeable right. person. Um, yeah, but, yeah, but also but, Churchill, Churchill was also somebody who, you know, he was a very, very, he believed in something and he went for it and he went against the grain. I mean, it took quite a few years for them to say, right, come back in and can you help us out? Because I think the country was desperate. But I, I think I think if you look at Boris as a, as, a, as a person, I agree, he's an intelligent man. If you look at, if you take a step back and look at tactically, strategically, how he actually inserted himself, timing-wise, as the leader of the Conservative Party and of the country, he timed it perfectly. He resigned when people think, why are you resigning as foreign secretary? He then waited for a while, waited for basically all the candidates that were all useless and not really, really worth talking about to not to put their hats in the ring. He then waited. He probably had a very good PR advice from his fiance. Dominic Cummings. Actually. And Dominic Cummings. And said, wait, wait, wait. And he waited the last minute when most of the people or the journalists were saying, well, obviously You've he's not on me, guys. Sorry? Are we back? Can you hear us okay? Sorry, guys, I'm missing the conversation because you've actually frozen on me. You've frozen on me. Can we unfreeze? That's it. That's it. You, okay, you're back again. Okay. No, so, so I think I think the last point I was making was he, he's he's a very he strategically he's a clever guy. He used the advice and his own brain to strategically put himself in that position as leader of the country. He watched Theresa May fall. He waited at the right time. He resigned as foreign secretary. And here he is. So he's not, he's taking the advice of so-called scientists, but he's not a stupid man. He's got his own brains. He's not a puppet. Actually, no, but, 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 he, but, 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 but that... Go on, go on, Andy. But he's still doing that now. He's not willing to commit himself because the thing is, as I says, if he was to get it wrong, based on the information he's receiving from these experts, if he goes against them and gets it totally wrong, He's committed political suicide. Well, um, yes, um, but there's a, there's a few points Very to true. say. Uh, first, um, it's up to him to decide which experts to listen to. And what I mean is you have to surround yourself with the right people. And anyone with any kind of brain mm -hmm. will know immediately that you surround yourself with virologists and infectious diseases per people. He hasn't done that. He's got government funded scientists um, who are basically admin people uh, and academics. They're now his friends. Um, and uh, that's a disaster. The second thing to say, um, on reflection, having got a better and closer look at Boris Johnson, is that he's entirely unsuited to lead anything. 
And the reason is um, all he's interested in is power and the classics. So he's quite capable of writing a book about classics. Uh, and people accuse him of not being a detailed person. The reason is he quite clearly has a concentration problem. He's got ADHD, which is why he's impulsive and why he's effusive, which is why he's a serial philanderer. Uh, and if you, if you read the interviews, um, he's, he's very, very ebullient and impulsive with his women. Um, and uh, therefore, he's incapable of concentrating on something he's not interested in. And politics is clearly something he's not interested but in. But I noticed, I think you're probably right that he's got ADHD because he does, every time he's uh, interviewed, not in a classic setting when he's doing his daily briefings, but he's interviewed on, on the fly when he's visiting the hospital or whatever he's, he's doing, he, he has a problem in concentrating longer than about 10 seconds. Correct. He can't even get a, two, a paragraph out without thinking about something else making a joke to get back to where he was. To, he, he's all over the place most of the time. All he's done he's actually, with it. But, but it's actually interesting because you, you say his philandering ways and things like this. And and the thing is, again, that comes down to, and I'm, God, I'm using the word a lot today, is optics. It, it, it's how it's perceived by the public. Now, the thing is, just because he's, a let's say, a philanderer or a womanizer or, 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 or a serial adulterer or whatever reason, does that disqualify him from being a good leader? Or does that disqualify anyone from being a good no, leader? Because you, not. You, could look at, you could look at JFK, um, you could look at um, Bill Clinton, you could look at Donald Trump, and, and, and God knows how many other politicians. And the thing is, you, you, you sometimes have to actually ask, is there a relation between actually being a strong testosterone fuel leader um, uh, and 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 your and your, and maybe even your sexual behaviour, because if you actually look at the animal kingdom and you actually look at the bull or, or even apes, they will actually fight each other for the privilege of being able to um, have um, relations with all the other with all the with all the other animals. Correct. Like bulls but but don't like forget, this. it's about knowing your position in society and the responsibility. So, for instance. Uh, People who are role models um, are expected to, to have a higher moral code and behavior than the average person, um, which is why, for instance, there was this, all this furore about um, uh, certain conservative um, MPs uh, having, having sworn in a certain manner in public and so on, or behaved in a certain way. Um, although not disastrous, it clearly is not wise when you're in that position, and that's what disqualifies them. They should yeah, have but, known. But, again, but it is human behaviour. I mean, look. I mean, even John Major, who comes across as such a flaws, who came across as such a plausible character, he was. Um, he, he was. He, he had an affair with Edwina Curry for God knows how many years. Did he not? It, it depends on. There are two things. One, uh, people do need to know their position. I mean, for instance. Um, who knows what the royal family get up to, but they have a very clear optic. They know they need to conform to. Um, and then there's the reason for doing said behavior. So for instance, if you can't help it, um, if you're say ADHD type, because you simply can't help it, um, then there are other things that you're simply not going to be able to help. Um, and then there is your right the high testosterone drive behavior. Uh, so you are honorable and focused and dynamic and you achieve your results, but obviously you have your testosterone driven behavior as well. So yes, of course, you'd ex you would put up with that behavior from a great leader because their testosterone is part of their success. Um, and and so the thing is, you could actually say that even, even sex comes down to a level of power as well in the end. Of course, then, and that's why that's why the House of Parliament are full of adoring young women looking at all these decrepit old people. Sorry, the thought of Boris Johnson doing something even remotely sexual is really anyway. I think that helps fasting. But I, I wanted to ask a question about. Um, I found it interesting. The last again, very topical. The last couple of weeks uh, is Akia Starmer. Uh, there was a comment in. Um, he was interviewed by one of the key reporters, I think, on the BBC, and they were quite surprised that he actually from day one when he could start to show himself as a leader of the Labour Party, and for me, he looks more conservative than, than Labour, that he went for the lockdown. And a lot of people that when I call stout uh, Labour supporters were saying, hang on a minute, if you're supporting the people 
supporting people in terms of employment, the workers, people that need to put wages in their pockets that cannot survive on universal credits or beyond.